Be Mark. Be Mark. Action. Action. I'm coming for you. Action. Open the container. Contraband. It's based on a, a film that was done in Iceland that Baltazar, our director, was uh, an actor in. The original movie was uh, called Reykjavik Rotterdam. It was a great little movie. It was a bit of a thriller, but it had this great kind of high smuggling aspect to it. So I was uh, tasked as an actor, and then I became a producer. I hadn't seen that kind of a heist thriller, so I was immediately attracted to it. I thought it was a fantastic premise for a good story. I wasn't overly excited about the script that I had been sent then I suddenly started thinking about, you know, what about, you know, the, I actually have a great story, you know, uh, which, which might actually do, do well as a remake. And we sent it to Mark, who was my first choice from the beginning. We watched it, and both, you know, Lev and I responded right away. The story itself works so well. The way that uh, my character is able to manipulate things and, and, uh, and basically pull off the near impossible. I don't really see it as a remake in a weird way. I just see it as a film that has a story that has been used for another film, and then you just create a new story about, out of that story. Hey, Sweet Pea. I need you to push through a Twit card for Chris Faraday. I knew a little bit about the shipping world and the containers and how dirty actually that world is and how much stuff is going on beneath the surface there. So it was a great opportunity to show how they do this. It's really steeped in, in reality. It's, you know, it's sort of like this concept that is real on the planet and, you know, contraband and smuggling and all that stuff, but it's not really known about a whole lot. People really enter this world and this value system of loyalty and brotherhood and that it's kind of thrilling. It is great to see people step outside, you know, the norm and do something that the rest of us wouldn't do, you know. I thought it was really interesting that Balthazar said he really only saw Mark playing kind of the role, so that was a really big endorsement. Oh, well, yeah, put your hand from the windscreen. He was actually a star of the first film. So I was a little concerned because I didn't know how precious he'd be about me doing my own spin on it and everything, but we hit off instantly, and he certainly understood what I wanted to do and how I wanted to make it my own. Oh, everybody's drinking tall boys and nobody's fucking working. Mark Wahlberg, he's perfect because I think he has that mixture of boyish charm, and you believe him as a blue-collar guy. It's very real to this character. What's great about Mark is he's very real as well. So with him and Bolt, it feels very genuine. Ready and action. Where's the money? Where's the fucking money? I say you have the fucking mind. Do you know what? So how was it to be in a fight? Yeah, I feel it. I feel, still feel jolted. I still feel I went through a little bit of a, a tumble. I like beating people up. Yeah, I got to beat up pretty much most of the characters in the movie. Hey. Bloody fucking mother. With uh, utmost respect, Mark Wahlberg is a strong man. Thank you for doing this, Chris. I love you. It's gonna be okay. It's always a little bit nerve-wracking to be the new girl, and I turned up my first ever day on set and was covered in blood and then sort of wrapped up with head and everything, like a burrito in plastic, but then sort of dumped in a muddy hole. And it was paling, actually, and freezing, so, you know, try not to shiver. What we have going on is our uh, sequence where we're gonna dump some concrete onto our lead actress, Kate Beckinsale. Kind of a scary proposition, so we have to make sure that all our ducks are in a row today. Um, as you can see, we've got the cement truck backed up to the form. So uh, what's going to happen is our truck will back up, start dumping real concrete onto the dummy, and uh, Mark is going to come up and knock the form supports out, and then all the concrete's going to come pouring out onto Mark. He has to turn around a little bit towards. Do you look this way? Yeah. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll place the real Kate in, put some uh, fake concrete around her, and then it's going to look like she was actually there in the form. Call an ambulance! Probably not the most glamorous position she's ever been in, but she did awesome. She's incredibly tough. That's probably as good a way to start as any. Definitely feel part of the gang now. Welcome to contraband, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking married, Chris. Danny, 
I know. I'm standing right there with you. Danny has to be real, but he has to be light. You know, one of these people that are happy to be where they are and who they are. And Lucas is like that. <laughs> He's really just very nice and chill guy. I got to talk to Baltazar a lot, and he had a great vision for my character. It's one of the things I really liked about Danny and Chris. We're just good buddies going on this sort of adventure together. <gasps> And it just looked like a lot of fun and like it'd be a really good movie, like the kind of movie that I'd want to watch. Get your glow sticks out, Lucas. We might have bought it. It's like such a cool group of actors. So I was just really excited that they wanted me to be part of it. So who do we know in Panama? You gonna go see, uh, you gonna go see Ruben? Uh, Edwards in Panama. Currency. You have to bring back a shitload to make it worth our while. So I'll bring in a shitload. I mean, a shit ton. I'll bring in a shit ton. <laughs> Sebastian is Chris's old, old, old friend and seems to have been part of the fabric of our lives for a long time. Balt and I were determined to, to make each scene about how is Sebastian, in his mind, trying to do the right thing over and over again. I trusted you with my wife and my kids, and I fucking loved you like a brother. And he has got a good support system, but those demons never go away. It was Ben Foster who insisted that we spend as much time as possible together, so that relationship is just seamless. So where do I sit? You can sit on the floor. <laughs> oh, wonderful. You know what? I thought you were going to see your lap, so I'll, I'll take the floor. We didn't want that role to be predictable in any way, and he brings such a complexity, and I think that was the key. Little visit you paid Kate, the kids, Chris's family. That's my family. You definitely think it's going to be me and him versus them. He's got a gun! Whoa! What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Giovanni met me because of another role in the beginning, and I was sitting in the, in the, in the meeting and said, you know what? What about Briggs? Did you know the tattoos he had was fake? What did he fake? Fake, yeah. yeah. They look really real. In the beginning, we were trying to decide what the look should be, and once we saw it, we were just like, that's a, that's a bad man right there. I'm watching your sister's kid play soccer right now. You don't call me back in five minutes, I'm gonna walk out on that field and put a bullet in his head. It was great working with everybody. I mean, it's just a, a really great cast. We're at Old Point Bar in Algiers, uh, and this is a well-known landmark in, in New Orleans. And we um, chose this bar and actually renamed it in the script because a lot of locals hang out here, and it's got great character, great texture, and a lot of people know the place, so. Chris Faraday, back from the dead, man. I didn't want to make a film that was about the French Quarter or the jazz of New Orleans. I wanted to make about the blue color people that work on the river. That was the feeling of New Orleans that attracted me. It's a very honest portrayal of New Orleans because it's a lot of the sides of New Orleans that tourists wouldn't see. We're here in Algiers Point, which is a blue-collar blue working neighborhood in New Orleans on the other side of the river. Chris and Kate obviously have aspirations to cross the river and, and raise their kids in a different neighborhood eventually. But for the time being, they're still here where they grew up and where, where Chris uh, spent most of his time working. So uh, Algiers becomes sort of a metaphor for the, all of these characters. I liked it very much as well because I, you know, obviously I'm from England, so um, in terms of, you know, really placing where your character's from, it's great to actually be there and walk around and see everything. And it's such a particular city too, I think, that I, I wouldn't have had a sense of what New Orleans is like if we had been filming somewhere else. You can't deny um, the city as a character, you know, just being here letting that sort of sneak into the veins of, of, of the movie and the characters. This represents Briggs' apartment building. We chose this one because it has a more kind of fortress look to it, and uh, the director was very interested in these kind of concrete blocks for Mark to be able to be pulled back behind there with uh, Giovanni, where it was kind of out in the open, but not really. I'll come asking your wife for it, your kid. Cut. Are you cool if I'm if I'm grabbing your shoulder yeah, yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hold on. Cool. I thought you were doing that, right? Yeah, hold on. Yeah. So we go here. No. Yeah. It's the whipping around here. Yeah. Uh, you know, doesn't necessarily have to land that hard. It's just shoot. Action. Cut. Are you good? 
Jag var sant. Alltså, I think so. I think it was okay. One more time. Maybe one more. <laughs> in the Icelandic version, they were smuggling alcohol, which is relevant in Iceland, but it doesn't really marry itself to, to America. The whole idea about super notes really attracted me. Learning about how that is coming actually through Panama, because they have access to the same printing machines that the Americans used to print their money with. It makes it rain in the club like this, bitch. <laughs> we looked at the port, we looked at the Panama Canal, we looked at some of the slums where they would be going to buy the money and the drugs and it's just an incredible city visually yeah, kid. Panama. we've actually been incredibly successful at finding little pieces of Panama to shoot in New Orleans and that's a whole separate thing in itself we are somewhere in right near the Superdome we're on the I guess fake side of Panama we're coming in that was kind of perfect for where Baltazar wanted to set up the ambush site. We did do some billboards in the area and graphics that kind of let you know that you're in Panama. It really looks like Panama. It's got this grove of date palm trees and the city skyline. As soon as I saw it, I felt this is it. So this is the um, pseudo throttle. But I thought that you were driving with this, but you're not. You, you were just telling the chief engineers what to do. So you might as well have a the Progresso commercial, have a coffee can and be like, hey, what's up? Slow down, please. Because that's basically all this is. The boat is beautiful. It's really fun working on, on like a boat like that. What I love is that the boat is a character. It's a huge metal monster. And that becomes a character in the movie. And action. You want to make it feel like you're there, and you know, a boat, even though it's eight, nine hundred feet long, it's pretty small inside when you get right down to it. So I think uh, it was a challenge for the for the crew, the camera operators, everybody to kind of move around and kind of get what they get. But that's you do it because of the authenticity. The ship is going to start just on this side of Algiers Point. Okay, um, helicopter will be coming up along here and following it. Where we take it out <laughs> on the other side of the bridge. Which is, which is pretty much right here. Parallel here, right pretty here. Pretty much against these chimneys here. Yeah. Uh, and our camera positions have been marked, but they're uh, obviously we're... We've got one up Bollinger. One here, one just south of here, and one up to the north of here, but we'll come, which will be coming to join us, and one on the other side of the river, which I think we all know which ones we're going to be in. Plus a camera position on, on the board. And, at the beginning of the film, we have a takedown uh, basically performed by the CBP where they're going to take down this cargo ship that's coming in with Andy on it. That's it right there. There's our guy. Timing was critical. We only had a, you know half an hour to do it. We were able to coordinate the customs guy to be able to hover around to the side of the boat. Uh, this is our ship right here. Hey, slow your speed, slow your speed, and just ride up alongside the ship. He has a big you know light on the back of the helicopter, and we're able to direct him to follow and search for Andy running up the side of the uh, of the ship, and you know just we timed it perfectly, and you know the, the helicopter hovered along to the bow of the ship and popped the light up, and there he was. And we got it in one take. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Once we let them loose, it was it was just like wow, this is how it really goes down. Even the the police and government officials were hospitable in New Orleans. Can I release my paradise? It's probably much more afraid than I would have been if there wasn't a helicopter. It got me running. It was fun. Try. And that's where we start. Yeah. You need to relax. He will hold you. Cool. All right. Chris comes running in, and Danny will say, "Get out of the way." He, he runs in here with some sledge, grabs the sledge, runs out here, and starts hitting the chain. Boom. Walt is awesome. He's one of the best directors in Iceland, and he really has control over the movie. I mean, he knows exactly what he's doing. The fact that he's made the movie already once, you know, doesn't hurt. He knows what he wants, and we just do it. We start unloading the money, and he comes with the, car with the, with the carpet cleaner, and just let you know, you just start, you know, throwing money. I love working this way. All the choices that he's made in the performance, it's always based in reality. What's the most realistic way of portraying this moment? Baltazar really feels a lot from being in a real location, and shooting how it would really feel in that kind of environment. He would prefer to actually take a camera and experience it with them. And I think there's an emotional quality that comes out of that. Just watch him, just watch him. 
aware. There. there. It allows our camera guys to, to, to feel it rather than think it, and uh, it becomes a, a little more intimate, and, and that uh, supports the performances. Here we go. We're not shooting like one camera, setting up a shot, going in close, then turning around. Everything's being shot from multiple cameras, so, you know, with a lot of improvising, and you just try to do what you do, and he captures it on film. We always like to keep it, you know, keep as close to reality as possible and make you feel like you're in it. No, after he throws it down, then you run, you get really scared, okay? It's always great if you can tell a story that has a lot of entertainment value, but at the same time, you're seeing great characters. I think you can make great entertainment become art, and art become great entertainment if you if you marry it together. Back there, no way, my, my, my. What's really cool about this movie is all the relationships are very real, and the people are very real. We were very lucky to get a lot of really young, exciting talent, as well as uh, some serious veterans. And it's been great. This has really been one of the better experiences I've had. It's something that's dynamic in the way that it stretches the boundaries of sort of like ordinary filmmaking. It's been great. I've been extremely lucky. And, and you develop something, and you're a part of it, and you, you understand it, and you, you love it. And, and to be able to do that is fantastic. Okay, it's a wrap. All right, cut. <laughs> <laughs>